Hello, it's Sarah, and I am going to do a 16 by 20 inch canvas. And I put it on its, her, uh, let's see, landscape. And I am just going to start slapping color on here. I'm actually going to just apply it. I spritzed it a little bit with water, but I am going to, this is, you know, Oh man, that's a metallic. Didn't mean that. <laughs> I want a little bit of pink. Alright. I spritzed it with water and I have a wet brush. And I'm just going to see what happens. But I, this is just to get a base on here. I'm going to make a, um, a little neighborhood scene. Of course, um, uh, Diane... Um, Salter posted on Facebook a picture of a piece I think she must have um, done it for someone and uh, I like how that's blending the metallic that was a happy accident right there now let's do some pink and it should turn purple um, anyway but I it said um, that she made it for someone so uh, I just I thought about my houses and then I was going through my jelly prints today and just thought um, I have enough paper that I can just start to kind of piece this together see now I don't want to screw it up because that looks pretty good just make these. I think I'm going to stop blending it. I don't want to keep getting brush marks. Um, I'm going to kind of try and get the paint off my brush. So can you see how it's going from dark to like light to pink? I love it. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to, um, some green down here probably I should probably do a dark green I think I'll put black green and this is where all the houses are going to be anyway so hope I mean I don't even know if you'll be able to see the um, I'm gonna put a little more pink because I'm gonna I want to pull the pink up a little bit because the houses are going to cover this area and I just want to make sure that it that the pink is in the picture and it's kind of down a little low and I am no expert you know I'm just trying something here I'm having a hard time there we go it's getting it's moving but that metallic blue was also good too so maybe I'll put a little more of that it's moving pretty good um, I did spritz it like I said just with just to get it to go because I don't it is just um, craft paint but I want I would like this to be up in the sky a little more too so that's good and maybe leave it a little thick too like so it makes see those lines I don't even know if you can see that putting a little blue in the pink but it's still not moving up as much as I like but I think if I play too much I could lose what I have so I think that's better see how it's well my lights are so shiny but I think that's kind of what I want to I'm gonna stick with that and I am going to clean off my brush and get this is black green. Just a little bit of black green I'm going to put on the very bottom. Just wetting the canvas to get it to move. And I'm going to put a little bit of um, olive green. See that's very, very dark. And I'm going to put this olive green. Uh, now this could screw up the whole thing, but I, I really don't mm -hmm. want to... Um, excuse me. No. Kirby, what's the matter? There must be something, um, 
some type of toy. But um, this is definitely not my style of painting, but I absolutely love how that turned out. That is amazing. Like, you guys, I don't even know if you can see, like, with that shine. Anywho, all right, let me put this green on here, and it's very dark. But I, you can always go lighter. So that's the idea. Now I'll put this green on and pull it down. Oh. Curb stop. There must be something under a cabinet or something. So see, it's actually doing exactly what I hoped. I need a little more water. See, it's not... Can you see how it stayed dark at the bottom? And then I blended it. Kind of turned into an olive -y green. And to the light green. And I'm going right up into that blue. But I really don't think that matters right there. Because I can, um, I'm going to cover all that with houses. Maybe not right on the edges, but I'll shade around that and everything. Alright, so I'm going to have to let this dry. And I'll paint the edges of the canvas and everything. But that's my background. And then I'm going to put some, um, hopefully these colors will look good. I didn't even think of that. But this is what I've chosen for my, alright honey, I'll get it. For my jelly prints, I have, they're going to go in order. But I think they'll all go. They'll go fine. Um, yeah. They're all going to pop out. Um, I think I'm going to put a sun up there somewhere. Um, so yeah, so I got to let it dry. Alright, you guys? I'll be back. Alright, um, I think <coughs> I, I need my camera to go up higher. See? I need it up like at least... Huh... Look at that. Another six inches would be much better. But, huh. I don't know how I'm going to be able to do that. It's dry. I never did this before, you guys. I mean, I've never made like a Bob Ross background. <laughs> Alright, so this is how this is going to go, I think. That, and then that. And then I think I put this, this, this. I think I forget. I took a picture, so you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna break out the picture, and uh, I think it was something like this. These three were the tallest. See how the pink is gonna go away if I don't? Um, maybe that. This was. You know, I don't remember, but like, I kind of want the pink, I think this was like that, that was like that, this, something like that, I could even, I could still put stuff behind. All right, I gotta go get my phone. I'll be right back. All right, I wish the camera was up higher. I think that's gonna be good though. I have a lot of houses. I think I think I want it like that. That's what I'm thinking. Um, so there's actually like three layers. This one is the tallest. And then th these three are kind of <clears throat> the most in the front. Um, I like that that is even. The second row that you see kind of has to be even. This doesn't have to be even. It just has to. So he can be tall, but this one has to be even. And this one has to be even. Alright, I think this is what I'm going to put on here. 
Um, you can see some of the pink, so that makes me happy. Can't really see a lot of the green, like the lighter green, just on the sides. Um, but I can definitely uh, fix that up. I think I like it down there. And then I'll have enough room for a sun and just have a sun coming on there. And that's it. It's going to be basic. And I'm not going to, like I was thinking of putting um, a bunch of um, mixed media in the on the background but I'm gonna leave it um, and just see how it goes and let the papers be the stars of the show so this is what I'm gonna attempt to do right now um, it's gonna be tricky because I have to lay them out in such a way that I think I'm gonna mark the canvas where I want the rose to go and um, so that way I'll have a better chance of I'll probably use like a chalk pencil or something that's um, going to go away but and then I'm going to figure out what paper I'm going to use for my son and um, yeah I think this is what I'm going to go with I need roofs too this is what I was thinking for the roofs now I don't know um, I did pull some green for like grass and stuff so if I want to put a little hill in front of something or something like that and this is basically what I was going for this little canvas that I did but um so I think I might just use these dark purples for the roofs kind of different variations of purple and just maybe that'll tie them in but roofs are generally darker they're not always like one could be red. I don't even really have a red paper. So I'm going to have to figure out my roofs. And that's the thing because I think I have to figure that out before I um, put anything down. I think I might attach my roofs to the houses before I put them down because they're going to overlap. Like, let's see. Well, this roof, the roof on this house, here I'll pull it back a little like this roof is going to get overlapped by this building um, that that's kind of like the only one really that's going to get overlapped and I could pull him to the forefront no I'm leaving it like that I'm leaving it like that I think um, yes I am alright so I'm gonna come back when I have decided what roofs I'm going to use. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, so I did this roof, and now you know it's going to make these act even taller. I didn't even think of that. So I might cut them down, we'll see. But that's going to go on that house. And I mean, it's okay. I kind of wish it was a, no, I think it's good. I like that. So that's going on that one. And then this is a similar, but I wanted to show you how I get the angle. I just made measurements like this. I um, line it up on my thing, on my cutting mat. Here's the halfway mark. Um, I think I did the how how far. Uh, I want to see. Yeah, it's like an inch over. I didn't realize that. Okay, so I I did it like an inch from the corner, so it would be right here and right here and then I put it in my cutter you can draw a line if you want but basically you just all you need to do is put the line I mean the the corner here and the little dot you made and it'll cut the line on the right angle for you so you do the same thing with this one and my blades probably getting a little dull because I've been cutting um all types of stuff. So where did the lid, did I just, oh you may, hold on. Lost my lid, lost my, my roof. Okay, so that one's for that house, this one's for this house. So I kind of just went with similar colors. I don't want to put too many more colors, so I'm going to probably do two, at least two houses the same color roofs. So like these both have, these are both pinkish, these are kind of, these might be good with the same color roof, or this one with the blue and green. Maybe I'll do a dark green. I love this color 
and I only I used it for um, grass and seaweed. Um, I don't have any other green roof. I mean papers. Here we go. Yes, I do. I'm going to use this one. I mean, it's kind of very similar to that. I think I am going to just go with the dark one. <laughs> and I'm just going to make um, a pointy roof. And you know what? I might end up cutting these down. I don't want to. So I'm just going to make the roofs first. Oh, where's my cutting? So what you need to do, hmm, I don't I may not even have enough to do both of these. Yeah, I think I will. As long as I can get them. So I'll cut this down first. See what I have to work with. Um So do you think I could get two roofs out of here? I could definitely get the narrow one up there. So I'll go for this one. And I'm only making a, about like a, a quarter inch overhang on them. So um, I kind of just, let's see. Oh, I used my measure, sorry. So this is four and a quarter. So four and three quarters. All right, we can do that. I'll cut this at four and three quarters and my smaller roof won't need to be as big so we'll be good with that. Um, this one's the four and three quarters which it doesn't really match. It's got the yellow um, and then I only need it to be about two I think I'm going to make it two and a quarter, but then if I over two and a quarter is, well that's, that's good enough. Two and a quarter is plenty high. These are whimsical houses, so that's why I love whimsy, because it can be, I'm not an architect, you know, and then this one's going to be, I'll make this one taller though, we'll see. I have three and a half, so four wide by like, what about, about like four, nah, three, and that'll still be the tallest roof I have. So, and then again, I'm going to make the points with, um, the same way, but I'm going to just center it. How big is this one? Um, I just eyeball my centers. And then I'm going to go all the way down. I mean, you could even not go all the way down. Hmm. I think I'm going to go all the way down for this one. So again, you just start at your center or the little dot and go right to this corner. And you'll get angle that you need or close enough right um, so that's this house oh well, you know what you got to remember I'm gonna have to trim it because um, you need at least a half an inch to glue it on with I could probably get away with it but I'll trim that up in a minute but I gotta leave room for um, a little over overage back here. But this is going to be a tall one. But I'm going to leave I'm going to make a half inch mark. And hopefully you can see. And that way I'll make, I'll just go center. Um ba -bum -ba -bum. I'll go center to that mark instead and that'll give me a half inch. See what I mean? Oopsie, I moved it. I moved it. Close enough. 
So see now I have that half inch to attach it to the house, which is important. That looks pretty. I like that one. And I'll have plenty of room to attach it and it's got a tall peak. This one's got a bit of a shorter peak, but now I have to trim the edges. Um, but you know what I'll do? I'll make a half inch line. I love the um, Tim Holtz ruler. Because you can just go, well, I'll do it from this end. Oh, shit. I just got blue. Sorry, I didn't mean to say S-H-O-I-T. But I got the dark blue paint, which is on my mat, on the paper, which came off because it's got that, um, the, the lovely metallic paint has such a sheen to it. I'm going to do, this is the top. Oh, so what was I doing? I'm going to go make a half inch mark so you just line this edge up and then that's a half inch and then I can just uh, when I glue it I'll just trim that so you know what I'm saying I'm gonna oh well I probably should have done it on the front mm, yeah I'll do it on the front because then it just makes it easier To know what I'm doing so yeah and then I'll just trim the little edge there so that's good so I have one two got four now these pink ones I have another if you guys know these kind of these have pink and but all right I'll come back when I'm done doing roofs okay this is what I have I think I'm going to start gluing and I probably won't do that on camera because it's tedious and it'll just take time. I'm going to put a sun. I think I might jazz this up a little more. Um, although I do want to put a face on it and everything so we'll see. Um, I just told you that I was going to make little marks where the first row, maybe I could measure or something, because really I have to get the back ones down first. Um, so I think I'm going to kind of make lines where they go. I'm going to take a picture and then I'm going to come back when it's all down there and my camera can go up higher. All right, I'll be back. Hello, I'm back. Now, here's the thing. I moved my camera up a bit. It's as high as we could get it. But this is still not, it's a, just a big canvas. This is um, 16 by 20. So anyway, I did a little bit more. Had some issues with my Mod Podge. So I, and I'm, out, I'm pretty much out of it, but I was using that to glue the stuff down, but then I would put matte medium on top so it didn't have that really shiny finish. Um, I did all my shading with paint this time. I used Payne's Gray, which is like a blue gray. My nails, I have paint all over me. Um, but like on all the bluish areas, I used that. I used black green on the green areas, and I used some black cherry or what is it called uh, cranberry wine I think I used or candy bar that's what I used candy bar which it's kind of like a reddish brown it's a, a bit darker than um, anywho I I like that color so and I did that with my brush and I'm gonna do it again because I want to add then I just cut out I stamped out a few flowers onto some yellow because I wanted to bring this yellow down here a little bit more um, and it's, eh, you know, this is, I had no idea where I was going with this, so it, I just knew I wanted the houses, and I love, I'm going to keep it plain. <clears throat> like, I was looking at my, uh, the lid to my, um, casserole dish holder, and it's way too busy. It just is. So this is going to get, I have a few more things I want to add, but they're just little details. I have this printable that I have, I've had in my stash 
I think I got it when I took um, my class with Mary Jean Chadbourne. It's from Tumblefish Studios. Um, and it's, I guess if you go to Tumblefish Studio, if you Google it, it'll come up. And it's where you can get downloadables. Um, it might be an Etsy store. I forget. I've had it a while. So I cut out a few things that I want to use from that. So what I, I basically just looked through my printables. I found this butterfly, which I might add here. Oh, I added words. And I added them with um, deli paper. So I stamped onto deli paper, and then I used Mod Podge, not Mod Podge, Matte Medium. And I'm not loving, like, the home, I guess maybe it's the background color, but you can totally see the outline of the paper. And I, um, I tried it before. It was a technique that uh, I think Joanne Sharp had mentioned it in a video, and I did it before, and it worked really well, so I was pretty confident. And then when I did it on here, like, you can really see it on the green like look at you can see the deli paper the like edge of it so I'll I'm gonna do it again I want to do I want to do create and inspire I think I'm gonna put we'll see maybe I won't because maybe that's enough one two three you know how I like to keep things in threes I have two of these and two of these I think I'm gonna put a heart I have one heart with the love so we'll see but I definitely definitely and I'm just gonna use my um, matte medium just going to put a little bit on. Oh, I'll zoom back out. Sorry. Hi, sorry. Um, put a little bit on my, I use a paper plate as a palette. And I'm going to use just one of my cruddy old brushes over here. <clears throat> I'm going to put these, I already cut them to size. I'm going to put this pink one on top of this house. And I'm just using, this is Liquitex. Um matte medium that's what it's called and this is a much thinner paper this is computer paper that I printed this out on just trying to line it up without sticking my head in the shot that looks pretty good um, let's see the other yeah so all three of these that I'm gonna use are just printer paper but I've used them before and they don't run so that's good whatever kind of printer I have is the right kind then I'm going to put this blue one, I think I'm going to put that under that there. And I'm going to put this one I already cut right here. But yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed in um, my Mod Podge. I'm not going to use Mod Podge um, on these pieces because, you know... You put a lot of work into it, and then you know what would happen. Um, it just started getting really clumpy or something. So I like that, and I'm going to outline everything with uh, my probably probably my Posca paint pens. Yeah, I think I'm probably going to use that. So yeah, so I have one, two, three. See how I always like to do threes, um, and just I don't know why I like the way it kind of looks even. But I can get really carried away with um, embellishing. And I absolutely did get carried away on that um, uh, casserole um, lid for my casserole carrier. So when I do the, I'm going to do the tissue box. I'll do a walkthrough with you on that. Because I know I went away, but we, I was trying to figure out what to do with my camera. Because you couldn't see me. And, um, I don't know. I just didn't film. I felt discouraged, I think. I got a little discouraged because, <clears throat> let me see if you can even notice. Here, up here in the sky, and I covered up my whole beautiful background, but, like, you can still see where the Mod Podge, eh, you can't really tell, but it left lines, like, and then it pulled up paint. So I had to fill in holes, and oh, it was like really scary for a minute. And I think it got me a little discouraged, but I'm good. I'm going to just stick with it. The, so really what I have planned for this piece is, I think, faces for both of these guys. Oh, look, I added the stars. I love the stars because without them, 
there wasn't enough over here. Now it fills up that area. So, and it's just, you know, moon and stars and sun. I don't know. Um, I think I'm, I'm just going to keep it simple. Like I said, I think I did want to just add, like, maybe this butterfly. Let me look. I think that really looks cool. It's yeah, it pulls the yellow. I like that. I think I'm going to put it there. I mean, it's, you know, and then I had this little butterfly that I was going to sit on the moon kind of by wish. So that would be two butterflies and then for a third butterfly, I was going to put this one right with the heart. And I think I'm going to do that. And that's my third thing, right? And then I had this strip, this little butterfly. But I don't think I'm going to use that. I might do, let's see, one, two, three. I think that I'm going to put this on here and then I'm going to stop putting stuff on my houses. Wait till I outline everything and see what it looks like then. Because, um, like I said, it. I don't, I, I want it to be, let the paper... Um, do all the talking, you know, so the paper. Now these jelly prints are ones that I did, um, uh, let's see, my first batch of jelly prints. And I've been looking for videos on a basic process, because you know I love a process, um, for getting your jelly prints to be um, see these thicker papers are harder to get to stick like with the with the matte medium you have to kind of just give them a second and press hopefully I'm in the shot I know I'm all the way over in the corner um, so but look that's down now but I think the Mod Podge was a little stickier, so I thought it was better as a glue. But I'm just going to be more patient with the um, with this. I should have pulled that. I don't really like it right there. Anyway, see now it might be too late. Nope, I got it. I want it down a little bit more. Sorry. I have now. I'm right over it, so I can see better. Right there, centered. Okay, good. Um, hopefully, I don't know, but yeah, so it's the gel mediums working out. I just have to be patient. Like that's not my big thing being patient, but I can do it for my art. <laughs> so this little one. Now these, again, I think these little butterflies came from, um, an ephemeris vintage garden, um, Definitely they did, I'll show you. Um, this is another downloadable from, and it just had a bunch of butterflies going all around the page. So I just cut out the ones that were whole, because I, I liked the blue and the green. They were kind of the colors that I used on this. So I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to do it. And this is paper. So I have to just, I'm telling myself that because I don't want to rip it. But I still think you need to put medium on the back and the front. I don't know. Maybe not with paper as much, but I'm going to pick it up and try and center it how I had it. Sniffing. Sorry. Sorry for the sniffing. Uh, see, I'm going to rip it if I move it too much. Alright, I'm just going to leave it right there. And the next thing we'll do is our faces, hopefully. I'm going to just attempt to kind of sketch them onto the surface with... Um, pencil, just a pencil. So that way I can not mess up <coughs> before I start doing it with um, uh, the pen. So let me look at that. That looks pretty good. 
See, I was going to do a door and a path and stuff, but I want to just, I think I'm liking it just like this. All right, so it's going to look, once I start outlining everything, it's going to be good. So, and I wanted to mention too, um, is my phone here? I definitely, on my son, my other son that I did, the face, I saw a piece by um, Diane Salter, have to admit it, that I actually, that was in my head. Um, this piece right here. No, that's mine. <laughs> um, but it was some piece that I saw on her blog, and it was in my head because I, I wanted to do those rosy cheeks. So I am going to get my, uh, I just went and got my board. I'm going to set it up there so I can kind of look at it. Now this is going to be awkward for me to draw this. Um, I guess I could do it like, this is such a big piece. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to do the moon first. I'll do the moon so I'm just using this, um, it's a, it says extra black, and uh, it's just a black graphite pencil, I guess. Let me see if I can do this. This is really big. <laughs> it's a big sucker. All right, let's try to get you down in here. Hopefully I'll stay in the shot. Now that's probably a little damp, but let me just try to put his face on here. I already put a, see I have to move stuff, I already put a, um, like a tracing line, or a, let's see, and then this has, he has a bottom lip, kind of has a top lip, but that doesn't look good, I'll fix it when I, there, I like it like that better. Um, <clears throat> so when I sketch it out, it's not in stone until I do it with the, um, with the pen. Alright, so that's much better. Okay, then I gave him a little, maybe the nostril doesn't need to be as big either. And then I start, I kind of start with the eyebrow to kind of see where his eye is going. And then... He has his eye like that. So that's good. And basically that's all I'm really going to do. Can you see that? It's very light. But that'll be good. Now I don't know how I'm going to get to be able to do this with, with it on camera. So I think I'm going to do it off camera and save this for when I do the um when I do that tissue box I'll be able to do this for you um, on camera so I'll go away and come back with that traced on this will all be dry so I can um, start outlining and I think we're gonna be close to done like I'm not thinking I'm gonna do much more so I think I'm pretty happy I like it all right I'll be back all right, so I have the faces on, but before I do them, I'm going to do some more shading. I just wanted to show you how I did that on this piece. I have my paper palette here, and it's just like a waxy paper. It says um, paper palette. I'll show you. Palette paper, it actually says, and this is by Strathmore. Um, and it's just waxy paper. I have my paper towels my angle brushes because that's what I like to use um, to shade and these are the techniques that I've learned when I was a decorative painter and then this is a mop brush it's just a soft bristle brush that you can kinda it's a little dirty um, but you can uh, soften your float so I'll show you what I'm gonna do this area right here where I put the little these trims down I just wanna shade under them to make them pop a little more so for the this uh, blue one. Am I in the shot with the blue one? Yeah. Um, boy, this canvas is so big. I have to move everything off my desk. And I keep knocking into it. Alright. There we go. 
So I'm just going to do underneath it and probably that's it. I'm going to do it with Payne's Gray. So I've gone into the water and I'm going to corner load my brush with some paint. So I've just put it on the tip of the brush and then I blend it into the bristles like this. You can't really see that, huh? I think the other setup is better for um, painting tutorials. But that's basically the technique that I use and then I go to the piece and put all the bristles on the surface and put the paint down gently pulling it across but the way I loaded the brush it goes from paint to water I'm just picking up a little bit more paint from my palette and then I'm going to take that mop brush, which I can't find, here it is, and gently kind of soften the edges. And it gives you that same look that you get when you use uh, either the big brushes, um, and I could use them, but I just did this whole piece this way, so that's why I wanted to stick with it. So now it's shaded underneath there. Hi Kiwi, I have my Kiwi with me, my little birdie. So I'm going to do the same thing on this house. You'll probably be able to see it much better too because of the color. This, this strip here, I'm going to use the Candy Bar Brown, which it's like a reddish brown. I'm going to corner load my brush, blend it into the bristles, and do the same thing. So with the paint edge up against this area, I'm just going to put some color underneath that uh, little scallop. Now it pops right out. I'm just getting a little more front paint. Because once you put this down, you really can't play with it too much. you got to let it dry. It's just the nature of um, working with acrylic paint. But now you can totally see that. Um, Plus, I'm going to outline it. So I'm going to do the same thing with this uh, section right here. I'm just going to pull my camera a little bit. And I'm going to use the Payne's Gray again, which is that like, it's like a purpley blue. It's such a pretty color. And I'm using my little angle brush because if I use my big one, I put so much paint on there sometimes that it gets away from me. So I'm doing the same thing, putting the color up against the scallop edge and walking the color down and then it peters out to water up at the top of the brush. And this is not a painting tutorial so just know that if you want more info on this you can look back in my videos I've got a couple of painting tutorials that will definitely show this technique better so at least they show up I gotta go around the butterfly <clears throat> I'm gonna do that in Payne's Gray <clears throat> I really just stuck to like three colors for shading on here Payne's Gray Candy Bar Brown and then I used um, black green on the green roofs and that's about it I didn't really do um, any other colors because I just wanted to keep it simple so let's go same thing up against the surf up against the butterfly around his little head just picking up a little more color from my palette and set him on to the piece Lovely. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'll outline the um, home again. I think I'm going to go over my words with... Um, make sure I'm in the shot. I'm going to go under him all around too. And I'm going to use the Payne's Gray, which is actually not gray at all. It's blue. And um, it will bring him life here. 
So yeah, a lot of people do, um, they shade with the big brushes, the Faber-Castell pit pens and things like that, because uh, they're awesome when you, when you use a gel medium. You can just, it's India ink and it will dry um, permanent, but if you, you it, because you use the matte medium, it gives you a minute to blend it with blend it out with your finger and um, gives you a great uh, result. I did that. I used that technique on the other piece that I did, but I just felt like painting this one, so that's why I did that. So now he's shaded, and then I guess I got to do the butterflies, right? Did I go under? I went under this flower. You can kind of see the darkness under there. Um, I did all, I did them. Doesn't look like I did that flower. And I only did like the left uh, left side of the sun. I mean the, the heart because the sun is coming toward it. So let's see. I am going to do the butterflies. And for that I'm going to use black green on the big one. Let me zoom back up again. And, yeah, that looks much better. This definitely pops now. Um, they all do. They all show up. So maybe, I think I shaded around that, but maybe not. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to do this butterfly with the black green. Um, and I use regular, um, regular uh, acrylic paint. This is by Ceram Coat. Where's my black green? Right here. I know this is Payne's Cry. Sorry, it should be out here. Um, here it is. Uh, this is by Delta Ceram Coat, but I use um, Americana, uh, Deca Word Americana too. I mostly use those. I don't use the Cracker Barrel as much, but I have a lot of metallics that are. Um, I guess they're not Cracker Barrel either. They're um, Crate Craft Smart. Oh, I was thinking Crate and Barrel. All right, so I'm going to shade this the same way. Water in my brush, blot, and side load it. That gets the paint is on one corner of the brush. See, this is not a good angle, and it goes to water. So that's the idea that you're darkest up against the edge of the paper. And then the water makes it fade out like it fades. And I know I'm not zoomed in or anything. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to outline everything in black and then I'll do the faces. Um, I'm going to use my pit pen to do the sun's cheeks, definitely. Uh, I mean, I could use paint, but I really like the way that turned out on my other guy. So I might just do that again. Um, what else? My Posca paint pens to do, like I'll color in their eyes. I'm just going to totally color them in with the Posca paint pens. They're paint and they're just easier to control than um, a regular paintbrush. All right, so that's done. Then this little guy, and I would do him with Payne's Gray. <clears throat> Same thing. And when you do a piece of a, re of a size like this, that's why you how you improve your techniques because you do it you just keep doing it um, meaning I am floating color around every item on here and by the time you're done or you know you've done it a lot so it's a great way to improve your technique that's just a little bit just to give it just to set it down in there I think I'm going to go around this side too. Ta da! All right, so I'm going to go ahead and outline everything. I'm just going to use, and I use the, um, these are, it's written in Japanese or Chinese, so it's 
the Unapaska paint pens. These are the water-based ones. I got them on Amazon. And this is the 0.7 uh, tip PC1M. And um, I'm pretty sure these are considered the um, fine point. I'm just going to take a piece of scrap and mark on it. So that uh, I know it's writing. Maybe I'll give it a shake. Just make sure. And yep, that's good. So what's cool about it too is. The paper is raised so it gives you it's very easy to make a straight line because you can just put the pen up against the paper do you know what I'm saying because the it's collaged on there it's a little bumpy because it's a canvas actually I can go straight across um, and I used uh, Mod Podge and stuff like that this is paint, acrylic paint, water-based paint. So, like right there, I and I'm a perfectionist because I'm sure you guys can't tell or I don't even know if I'm in the shot. Yeah, I am. But you can take a Q-tip and just quickly before it dries, you can take off any marks that, you know, you don't like. Or like down here for this little grass part, I'm going to take the line from all the way over and give it a little hill. So basically that's it. This is kind of the fun part. Really easy and just relaxing for me. I'm going to just outline this and I think I will come and add a little maybe something to the centers of them. Change the color a little. But that's one house. Let's do another and then I'll, I'll do it. I'll go off camera. Hopefully now see this butterfly. I just went on top of them because it's a much thinner piece of paper so I don't want to push too hard or I mean lose the edge is what I mean so I'm actually directing my pens instead of following the, the cut paper but he'll pop out nicely when I outline him So I think I was just looking through my um, no, I went totally out of lines looking for my through my jelly prints and um, had these already cut pieces that I did previously. These, all these prints were ones that I did previously and they were kind of cut into these and I just, I don't know, it just came together. Um, and then I'm like, but what surface could I use? And I had somebody gifted me these Patricia thank you Patricia for um, these big canvases and I've never done as big a canvas as this um, but man this paper just these um, houses just filled it up nicely so I love it it wasn't and I'll tell you what that um, background was the quickest background painting I think I've ever done I loved it. I mean, it got covered up. It's pretty much gone now. You can still see a tiny bit of pink popping through, and I love the light blue and stuff. I mean, there's pink over here on the edges, but it was so pretty. It was kind of like a Bob Ross uh, happy canvas. It's, it felt really good. All right, so that's two. I'm going to continue on, and I'll be back. Okay, I have, I don't remember where I was when I left, but I've outlined everything, uh, putting the faces on. I wanted to paint the, the whites of the eyes with paint because I wanted them to be dark. Um, I shaded a few more places that I thought needed shading. I darkened up my lettering with my jelly print, uh, my glazed jelly roll pen. I think I want to add create. What do you think? See, I wish you were here to tell me. I think either, see there's one, two, three, but I think, 
I think actually here would be cute too, up on that roof. But it might not show up because it's so dark. But when I do the jelly the jelly roll pen, it'll be okay. One, two, three, four. We're over here. But then I think I need to put one here. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'll put create here and inspire over here. Um, yes. So I just have to do inspire. And I think... Alright, so let's go. So, so far I have, for the faces, I used the pink big brush, Faber-Castell big brush, to just put some, I just love this pink color, that's why. And it's ink, it's India ink, so it's permanent. And I just like how it's kind of sheer. So I'm just putting that on the lips and the cheeks. And then I'll outline that. I based in the eyes. Same thing with my, my moon. I gave him a little rosy cheek too. And my circle's growing. And I guess his lips. Just a little bit. Um, I painted inside of his mouth with, um, see I don't like it as much on the moon. I think it's the man in the moon with pink lips. That's okay. I'm going to do a little bit more white. One more coat of white to get the eye, to get the, to get it solid. And then I'm going to be able to go over this with pen. My Posca paint pens, not pen pen. But um, I just knew I could get this opaque faster if I painted it on, and that's crooked, but, um, I can't really talk when I'm doing things. This eye is a little wonky, but I think I'll be able to fix it when I, uh, maybe I should have gone all the way up too, because that's just the lid, but it'll, it'll turn out okay. So what color should I do his, let's do the lip a light little color, a little more of that. A little less pink. Uh, and then the rest I'm going to do with pen, so I can start to do that, I guess. It's just such an odd position to be in, and I think I'm going to do the tutorial, you know what, we'll do Inspire real quick. This is what I'm using, these, um, the Tim Holtz, these are the Tim Holtz tall text. Um, so let's see, I have Create here, so I'm going to do it in all small letters. So I, N, S, P, I, haven't used my S yet, P, L-M-N-O-P I So I'm going to have to double, double up on that R and E Okay. So here's how I do it. I take my little um, block and I've been using stays on and this is actually deli paper and I don't think it's what you're supposed to use. I think you're supposed to use tissue paper but, I mean, I did the rest of them with this, so for today I'm just using this. But I think you're supposed to use tissue paper. Um, so then I, like, lay them out on my, um, like, on a line here. Come in a little bit. And do my best, this is a little wonky, to get them straight. I, N. And I push them right, kind of really right up against each other. S. Like it this way. P. And then I need that I again. So let's take it from there and put it here. And it's going to fall down. R. I didn't need the I. E. 
So you know what? I am going to stamp this right now. And then I'll add the um, other eye at the end. It'll be easier to add it in at, at the beginning of the word. And hope for the best. And I am going to go over it with um, my little, my, uh, what kind of pen is that? A glaze. Jelly roll. Sorry for my head. Good enough. It's a little, let me see. I could do better. But anyway, that's what I do. So I'm going to do that and cut that out and get it on there. I think I'm just going to come back when it's done. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, it's done. And I don't know if my sun and my moon are too whimsical. Like, this looks so cool. I like it. It's not overdone. Like, it's just good. I, I think the houses speak for themselves. I love that I added create and inspire. Home, love, wish. I like that. I like this trim. The trims are fine. And just the little bit of embellishments. This butterfly may be a little too dark, but it matched because it's blue. Um, but, and I love my faces. I think they turn out great, but I don't know if they're just too whimsical. Um, I like it. I like whimsical. So I signed it and I'm going to have to look at it. I didn't add any, <laughs> well, I did highlight a few things with like metallic paint. <clears throat> like, look at the sun. You can, I kind of highlighted, eh. Anything that's shiny, I think, has just metallic paint on it. But other than that, I haven't embellished very much or at all with stickles or, um, you know. I could put, see, I could put glossy accents in his eyes. But all right, guys. Um, thanks for watching. I know it was kind of, this was just kind of, I don't know. I decided to do it and just put the camera on. And so who knows if I'll even upload it. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching.